Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of In Pursuit of a Parlay. I am Chris Horwoodell, and we are back for Season 2, Episode 11. I've looked at the card. I'm excited about the card this week. Let's not dilly-dally. Let's get right into this. I feel like that's become the slogan, let's not dilly-dally. Get right into this thing. Thank you, as always, for all of your support, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on underdogpodcast.com, whether it's listening to the podcast through Spotify or Apple or whatever platform you prefer, we appreciate you. Game one this week, we are really getting right into it. And uh, as you see on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, I, as always, have BovadaSportsBook.com open in front of me for all of these lines. Game one is one that I am looking forward to right here. We're talking about number 24, Texas, number 13, Kansas State, kicking off at 7 o'clock Eastern time tonight. We're showing that the Longhorns are going to win this one about 60% of the time outright. For Texas, they're 5-3. and three. They're in third place in the Big 12. 3-2 and two conference record coming off of a, a little bit of a disappointing loss to Oklahoma State. I think they expected the W. But with an offense as prolific as the Longhorns have with Quinn Ewers, with Bijan Robinson, I don't think we have a ton to worry about. 47th in the nation in passing yards, 44th in rushing yards. A lot of this was without Ewers early in the season in terms of the passing yards. 36th in points for at 36.4. Worked out nicely. K-State, the number 13 team in the country, 6-2, second place in the Big 12 with an 8-2 and 2 conference record behind only TCU. They're led by Nebraska transfer Adrian Martinez. They're a dominant rushing team, number 11 in the country, 228 yards per game. And anytime we see a, a team that can really run the ball, we think the clock's going to be going pretty much nonstop and... Uh, you know, look for the under in this one. Uh, the under, I believe, probably hits 54 and a half. But we're going to avoid that entirely. We're showing that uh, K-State's going to cover this one more often than not, but I think Texas is getting knocked for the time they're playing without Bijan a little bit. This line has gone from two and a half to three just today. Uh, we're going to take Texas... Minus the full three, minus 110 at Bavada. And that is going to be our first pick for the parlay this week. Next game, top five Clemson Tigers head to Notre Dame to take on the Fighting Irish. The game's at 7.30 on NBC Peacock for those interested in tuning in. Clemson, minus four right now. We're showing the Tigers win this one about two-thirds of the time outright. Clemson's 8-0. They're in first place in the ACC with an 8-0 record, or with a 6-0 conference record, excuse me. DJ Uyunglele has been, uh, has been better this year. Still not living up to the massive expectations that he had coming into Clemson, but incrementally getting better and better and better. Will Shipley leads the team in rush yards. At, uh, at 739, and they are a running team, 185.4 a game, good for uh, 42nd in the country. They score the ball, 37.1, 34th in the country. Not an amazing defense, but <clears throat> it is it is what it is. Notre Dame is 5-3, and three, and uh, in terms of the independent standings, I guess that puts them in second place behind, uh, behind only Liberty, who's 7-1 and one overall. Notre Dame, again, they're a running team, uh, 186.6 per game, which is good for 40th in the country, a, a hair better than Clemson. They're giving up 28.4 points per game, tied for 133rd in the nation. Uh, points for apart, excuse me, and they're giving up 22.1 points per game, tied for 91st in the country. We're showing Clemson is going to cover this one about two-thirds of the time, and that is the pick that I feel good with. We're going to go Clemson, minus four at Bavada, and that is going to take our parlay now. Two picks in, all the way up to plus 264. Nothing wrong with that. Our third and final college football game of the weekend, excuse me, is going to be number 21 Wake Forest versus number 22 NC State, 8 o'clock kickoff tonight. We're showing that... Uh, 
I'm sure that NC State is going to win this one more often than not, but I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm in on this Wake team. I think I think we're overreacting a little bit because of how Wake looked last week against Louisville in that 48-21 to loss. This is a good team. They're 6-2, and two, the third in the ACC, 2-2 two and two conference record. Sam Hartman over 2,000 yards passing so far in those eight games. They're the 17th best passing team in the nation, 297.5. They are a top 20-ish scoring offense at 38.9 and an inadequate defense. I like this Wake team. I think they're underrated. Uh, NC State is also 6-2. They're third place in the ACC with a 2-2 two two conference record. Exactly like Wake Forest. Devin Leary has been a little bit of a disappointment this year. We thought maybe first-round pick, uh, but it hasn't all come together. The offense isn't very good. The passing offense, 77th in the country. The rushing offense, 100th in the country. They are only scoring 28.6 points per game, which is tied for 153rd, and they're giving up 17.4, tied for 118th in the nation. They scream overrated, right? Uh, we're showing that NC State's going to cover this one about 72% of the time. And they're, they're plus money, and I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Maybe this is the one we look at this week and say, Chris, what were you doing? But I think Wake's going to cover this one. I think Wake's going to win this one outright. Uh, we're going to take Wake Forest minus 3, minus 115 at Bavada, And that will be our third and final college football pick of uh, of the weekend although i am going to make a slight amendment uh, the minus 115 minus the 160 we're going to take we'll take wake we'll take wake money line here since the difference is only 45 points and it's not going to change things all that much for us in terms of the the parlay total let's just we'll play it safe turning to the national football league we're going to go all the way down here. We're gonna all the way down here to the NFL. And by all the way down here, we of course mean all the way up here. Sports, football. Let's get it going. That is basketball. This is right here. Football. Got the live scores. Got what's going on right now. And we go all the way down. Show more. Got to get to the NFL. Austin P. Not that interested in you. No offense. First NFL game we're going to talk about. The Miami Dolphins head to Chicago to take on Chase Claypool. And the Chicago Bears big trade deadline for the Bears. This is an interesting one. Bears played well. Seems like they're starting to figure out who they are. Uh, we are showing the Dolphins going to win this one outright about two-thirds of the time. The Dolphins made a big trade themselves. They went out and got defensive end edge rusher Bradley Chubb from the Denver Broncos. Dolphins 5-3, uh, and three, second place in the AFC East, tied with the New York Jets because, sure. Because, sure. Uh, Tua's back, and Tua looks great. Uh, they came back to... Came back to win after a relatively flat start against the Lions last week. Now won two in a row with Tua back. We're going to... Uh, we really we really like... I, I love this Dolphins team. I do. I, I don't... I unabashedly say that I love this Dolphins team. The Bears are 3-5. and five. Like I said, starting to figure out who they are a little bit more. Looked good against the Patriots a couple of weeks ago. Tough game against the Cowboys this past week. Second place in the NFC North, tied with the Green Bay Packers again, because sure. Uh, Justin Fields has looked better over the last handful of weeks, and they finally got him a weapon and Chase Claypool from the Steelers, who they acquired at the trade deadline. We're showing the Dolphins are going to cover this one about 85% of the time, and that is where I'm at, too. We're going to take the Dolphins, minus 4.5 at Bavada, and that's going to take our parlay now, uh, now full four picks in all the way up to, uh, we're going to, because I did that, they're going to make me, all right, bear with me. We're going to add Texas. We're going to add these guys back. We're just, we're going to scroll up because every so often when you, uh, when you leave the page, it 
messes with the parlay. So we jump back up. We take Texas. We take Clemson. And we take that Wake money line. And there you go. Our parlay. Four picks in plus 1,031 at Bavada. Big numbers. Big numbers and not a lot not a lot of risk associated with this one so far. Let's look at our next NFL game, the Carolina Panthers. This is an interesting one, right? The Carolina Panthers, and this is a one o'clock start. Where are we? Carolina heads to Cincinnati to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. We're showing the Bengals are gonna win this one outright about 80% of the time. Panthers two and six. They are coming off of a, a rough loss to the Falcons uh, after the P.J. Walker era has now begun. We don't, what do, we don't really know what this offense is under the P.J. Walker era. We know Baker Mayfield, former number one pick, now the backup. Carolina's in last place in the NFC South. For the Bengals, you know, they, they didn't look great last week on Monday Night Football without Jamar Chase. Short week for them. The the Browns really showed some flaws in that team, but I think this is going to be a, a decent bounce back week for the four and four Bengals, second place in the AFC North behind only the Baltimore Ravens. Big line at minus seven, but it's one I feel comfortable with. I think this team bounces back this week and uh, and they go to five and four. So we're going to take minus seven, minus one fifteen at Bavada. And that is going to get our parlay five picks in up to plus two thousand and fourteen hundred bucks wins two grand five picks so far. Let's keep going. The uh, and by the way, sorry, we are showing Bengals cover this one about eighty two percent of the time. If for uh, for those who are feeling confident in the individual plays, as I always say, parlays are incredibly hard, especially. An eight pick parlay, that's why the numbers get up to where they do. So I, I'm not I'm not saying throw your money away. Uh, um, but take what you like from this show. Take what you like, pick and choose, make individual wagers, and uh and, and play it smart. But I'm gonna try and get this number up as high as we can. Our next game, the Green Bay Packers at Detroit, take on the Detroit Lions. It's a one o'clock start. And that is right here. We're showing the Packers are going to win this one about 72% of the time outright. They're three and five. Second place in the NFC North behind the Minnesota Vikings. Aaron Rodgers obviously leads the team in passing 1,800. Aaron Jones, 575 yards and only one rushing touchdown on 98 carries. Packers are on a four-game losing streak, including a game that didn't look all that competitive last week to the Buffalo Bills. Ten-point loss, but I don't think anybody thinks it was that close. The Lions, on the other hand, are on a five-game losing streak. They're 1-6 and six for the season. They're in last place in the NFC North. And they've just looked bad over, uh, over the last three weeks, minus the first half against the Dolphins last week. But they, their defense was poor enough to give up uh, enough points for the Dolphins to come back and win. Since then, they've traded one of their best players, TJ Hawkinson, in the division to the Minnesota Vikings. This is not a, a team to bank on right now. We're showing the Packers are going to cover this line about 63% of the time. Minus 3.5, and, and that's going to be where our pick is. We're going to go minus 3.5, minus 110 at Bavada, and that is going to take our parlay now. Six picks in, all the way up to a plus 3,036. I like it. Our seventh game uh, is going to be the Las Vegas Raiders. Heading to Jacksonville to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're right here. We're showing this is about a coin flip for uh, who's going to win this one. The Raiders 2-5, and five, fourth place in the AFC West, and just didn't show up to play the Saints last week. They lose 24 to nothing. They crossed the 50 late in the fourth quarter. The offense wasn't there. It looks disjointed. They look bad. I, they have to bounce back, right? They, they can't possibly be this bad. Devontae Adams can't be one catch for three yards bad since he left the uh, the Packers for the Raiders. I don't buy it. Josh Jacobs having a decent season, 667, uh, 676, pardon me, rushing yards. 
Raiders can score. That's what frustrated me. They're 12th in the NFL in total points per game, 23.3. Their defense is bad, but they can score. Should not have been shut out. Last week was an anomaly. I don't buy it. The Jaguars are 2-6. and six. They're third place in the AFC South, ahead of only the Houston Texans. And so they finally, ja- Jaguars fans, good news, they finally go out and they get Trevor Lawrence a weapon in Calvin Ridley, and they, well, you get him next year. You get him next year if he's reinstated. Good luck. Um, Jaguars are a good rushing team, though. They have traded James Robinson a couple of weeks ago to the Jets. Robinson questionable this week for those who are interested in that game. 144.1 rushing yards per game, and uh, they're, what this means is Travis Etienne is going to have every opportunity to run the ball. I don't think this team's trying to win right now is, uh, is the moral of the story. I think... We have the Raiders covering about three quarters of the time here, and that's where I'm at as well. Raiders minus two and a half, minus 105 at Bovada for our seventh pick of the parlay. Now up to plus 7779, 7,779. Our eighth and final pick of the day, the Seattle Seahawks head to Arizona to take on the Arizona Cardinals. It's a 405 start right here. This is an interesting one. We're showing the Cardinals are going to win this one about two-thirds of the time outright. And uh, this game probably pre- this presents some opportunities here. Seattle's been playing good football. They've beat the Giants, the Chargers, and, in fact, the Cardinals over the last three weeks on their three-game winning streak. They are 12th in the NFL in rushing yards per game at 130.8. They're fourth in points scored at 26.3. They're tied for sixth at 24.9 points per game given up in the NFL. Geno Smith, man. <laughs> Geno Smith. Uh, Geno's the only guy who thought who knew this was coming. The Arizona Cardinals, 3-5, and five, fourth in the NFC West. Last place behind uh, behind everybody, the Rams, the, the 49ers, and the first place Seattle Seahawks. Are the Seahawks a fluke? I don't think so. I don't think they're first place good, but I think they're good. I really do. Uh, The Cardinals are the worst team in the NFL, uh, one of the worst teams in the NFL, in terms of points against the 26.3. There are only two teams worse. There are mid-tier points scored. They're uh, middle of the pack, passing offense and rushing offense. They can score. Um, But... They can't stop anybody from scoring. We're showing Seattle's going to cover this one about 74% of the time. And honestly, maybe the thing to go with here might be the over. Big number at 48.5. You know, Seattle's going to win this one outright. And this is where a great opportunity comes. We're going to take Seattle to win outright. Money line plus 105 at Bavada seems like, quite frankly, seems like stealing. And... I love it. Brings our parlay now six picks in up to plus $16,052. A $100 wager wins you $16,052. But again, I can't stress this enough. I say it all the time. Hitting the parlay is incredibly hard. If you're worried about throwing your money away, money away, take the picks you like. Pick and choose. Place the individual bets. You don't have to try and win it all. You can small wins add up to uh, any... Any of those out there who are, who are feeling the stress, feeling the pressure, gambling problems, as it says on the bottom of the screen, 1-800-GAMBLER for free, confidential, 24-7 counseling uh, of your issues. That's going to be it for this week's episode of In Pursuit of a Parlay. I've been Chris Horwardell. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next week. 